Hey everybody, it's Zach. Welcome back to the Heroverse. And guys, I just got done with Superman and Lois, Season 3, Episode 9, titled The Dress. Uh, guys, I just want to say uh, apologies for yesterday, how I wasn't able to get my spoiler review out. I just was super busy yesterday between me making, you know, between me streaming um, the Across the Spider-Verse event on Fortnite on my gaming channel, between me also working on my intro and outro for the gaming channel. There's just a lot of things I was doing yesterday, but I'm so glad I was able to get to this episode. Guys, just uh, just to, to clarify, this episode was super sad. This was a really sad episode. I was not expecting this episode to be as sad as it was. I was expecting, you know, us to pick up from the events of last week's episode, which we do in this week's episode between, you know, about, you know, uh, Mateo finding out about, you know, his mom having powers and between, you know, them kind of being... Between, you know, kind of the, the stuff he heard about his parents being, like, criminals, him, you know, learning, like, finding out about that last week's episode. Between also, you know, the, the big fallout between, you know, uh, John Henry finding out that Nat was, you know, dating the son of, you know, the son of Bruno Mannheim. And kind of that big fight sequence breaking out at the end of last week's episode. And just a lot of things coming to light. And pretty much in this episode, you know, they, you know, Nat and Mateo didn't really have a chance to like talk to one another and kind of, you know, John you know, from last week's episode said, you're no longer allowed to see Mateo and, and Bruno told, you know, uh, Mateo, you're no longer allowed to see Nat. There was a lot of stuff going on and there, we just, there was a lot building up and also, you know, John Henry and, you know, John Henry taking Pia to, to the DOD and locking her up and pretty much, you know, you know, putting on the power dampener so that way she couldn't use her abilities while they had her, you know, at the DOD, they kind of, I think they kind of have her in like a, a state of sleep right now. And they're, and they're, and they're making it where like they have her power dampened around where she can't hurt anybody else. And as we know from last week's episode, Clark, at the end of last week's episode, Clark said it's not a little bit much. And he's like, you know, she is a murderer and she tried killing me. And that's what we're going to be doing. And you know what I mean? It's kind of like we saw the, and he's like, we can't keep her here because, you know, we can't keep, you know, her from, you know, Bruno, that's not, it's not right. And he's like, I'm not letting my feelings, you know, uh, I'm not letting my feelings get in the way of what needs to be done. They're both criminals and she needs to be here. She tried killing me and she's killed people. And you know what I mean? And we kind of see the tension between Clark and John Henry. And that kind of continues in this episode. There's a lot of kind of, you know, budding heads in this episode between John Henry and Clark in this episode. There's also a lot of, uh, you know, kind of, you know, the way things were left between Jordan and Jonathan and kind of how Jonathan is still mad at Jordan for the, for the, for, for the events of last week's episode between, you know, uh, him being angry at Jordan for saving that dude and him getting in trouble because he wouldn't stay by the truck and he went to that dude. And that's really, that's the reason that, you know, that, uh, you know, John, Jonathan got in trouble is because he went to the dude when Jordan dropped him down and he should have just stayed by the truck when Kyle said it and none of this would have happened. Where, like, you know, Jonathan would be kicked out of the, the junior fireman, you know, you know, junior fireman, you know, kind of a program that he's doing with Kyle. And kind of, you know, Kyle wouldn't have, I mean, Kyle probably still would have found out that someone's still saving people around Smallville. But, you know, it just wouldn't have been to the point where, like, jo Jonathan would, you know, be mad at Jordan for, for Jonathan's mistakes of him leaving his post when Kyle said stay at the fire truck. So there's a lot of kind of, you know, building up from last week's episode that we're kind of getting resolved in this episode. There was just a lot going on in this episode, but like the main thing is about this episode that really made me really like sad was the fact in this episode, we end up finding out that, you know, we start this episode with, you know, Lois. I, I can't remember if we started it with the flashback or we started it with them. And I think we started it with the flashback or maybe we started it with them in the hospital. I can't quite remember, but we got a lot of the flashbacks to earlier on in Clark and Lois's, you know, kind of, their careers and kind of earlier on before like in, in when they were dating and their relationship before they ended up getting married. And, you know, we got, we like, they're, they're talking about, you know, where are we going to have our, uh, you know, where are we going to have uh, our, there's a word for it. Like, where are we going to have our wedding at? Like, where are we going to like, like, what, what are we going to do? So they're talking about where they're going to have their wedding, but we know that they're going to have their wedding on the Kent farm. We, we know that from, you know, season one, the pilot where we, we saw Lois and Clark getting married farm and it's just one of those things where it's like you know i that was really cool seeing the flashbacks earlier on in their career and them talking about oh like what, like we have to get a venue where we're we gonna get married and you know and, and lois being you know nominated for an award and it's up there with like an, a pulitzer award and you know she's like oh like she was kind of being like oh i don't 
I don't, I don't, that's just, you know, a, a popularity comp a competition. I'm not going to go to that event. And Clark's kind of trying to like say, oh, you should go to the event. You know what I mean? So that, I, so we could, so, cause you know, so that way we can all celebrate you and how great you are. Like same way that, you know, I celebrate you each and every day. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I love how everybody wants to celebrate you. Like I celebrate you every, every day. Um, and it's one of those things where, you know, we start off with the episode where like, Lois, you know, she had good news from the doctor. It's her and Clark going to the doctor and they have, she has a good news for Lois about how like she's, she has her final, you know, uh, you know, treatment coming up. And she's like, now it's time to think about the next steps. And I guess those next steps we end up finding out is her losing her breasts in this episode. And it's kind of like, we, I don't, I, I mind you when I, when I heard like, oh, like, you know, you're doing your last, you know, chemo treatment it's time for the next steps. I thought, oh, next steps to get back on track. Like, oh, you know what I mean? I did Lois beat cancer? Or is she, is everything, she, like, is the next steps her getting her life back on track? But we don't find out until kind of, you know, Clark goes to, Clark goes to Lana with the donation, all, all the clothes donations that he's going to be giving Lana. Um, because, you know, in this episode, there's a big donation drive that I guess happens, like, you know, every, every year, I guess, at in Smallville, where they do a donations, you know, drive. And, you know, everybody's around the house, you know, putting away, you know, donations in the box. And, you know, that's when Clark ends up coming across the dress that he gave to Lois to go to that big event for her to get her award. And there's a lot of kind of, you know, memory behind that dress because that's the dress that she wore, you know, when they decided what, where they wanted to get, where they wanted to get married. And they, and that was the decision that they wanted to get married at the Kent farm and kind of, you know, that was a that was a that was a beautiful night for Lois, you know what I mean, and beautiful night between both of them, between them finding out where they were going to get married, but also a beautiful moment because that's when she felt very like that was a the, she felt very beautiful in that moment, and at this time she does not feel beautiful because she's worried about what this will mean for her, you know, her uh, her marriage, about her losing her breast, what this will mean between her and Clark's sex life what what this will what this will mean for her about her feeling will she like she's questioning will i ever feel beautiful again I, like will clark look at me will clark look at me any different will this affect our marriage she's just worried about a lot you know what i mean in this episode and that dress reminds her of a moment where she felt really beautiful and she was told that she was beautiful and she was looked at very, like she was really beautiful when she was wearing that dress you know that clark gave her like that was just a really great night for her and she doesn't like, she doesn't want to think about those memories when she doesn't feel like that right now. And she's like, you know, I'm probably never going to feel like that again. I'm going to give away this dress. And when Clark sees that dress and we find out like kind of, you know, in that, in that flashback, what he did to get that dress that he sold his baseball, you know, rookie cards. So that way he could gather that dress. And she's like, and he even said, you know, like Lois is like, oh, like told Clark in the flashback, oh, I'm not going. And he's like, oh, but I got you something. And she's like, oh my God, this was super, like, don't, like, please don't tell me you spent a lot on this or whatever. And he's like, oh, I sold my, you know, my baseball rookie card. It's like, even this one. And he, and then that's when Clark said, you know, you are worth way more than the person's rookie card that he said. Like, you're way, you're, 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 you're worth way more than me than any baseball rookie card. You know what I mean? Like legendary, I forget who he named, but, you know, I just thought that was really sweet. And she's like, that's the sweetest thing anybody's ever said to me. And like, this is the first time anybody's ever bought me, you know, anything like this. And you just see like the beginnings of their beautiful relate the, the relationship and the fact that they're they're you know and just you just see that love in the air and right now she just feels like it's you know that she's lost so much and it got to the, gets to the point where she's afraid that they'll, she'll never have moments like that again. That's why she wants to get rid of that dress and it's one of those things where like Clark knows what that next step is, but he does not want to pry. He wants you know he wants Lois when she's ready to talk to her, to talk to him about that. And even, you know, when he brings the dress to Lana and I was like, Oh my God, this is so beautiful. And he's like, yeah, I got that for Lois, you know, you know, uh, for a big event. And, you know, I, I sold my baseball Ricky card. So that way, you know, I like, I, like I put me, you know, I sold my baseball Ricky card so I could get her that dress. And he's like, she's like, Oh, like what, what, like, why did like, oh, what did Lois think about? Like, what did she say? Or when she got, or she didn't want the dress anymore. And like even Lana's like, oh, like is she okay? And and that's and that's when he told her like, oh, like everything is fine. You know, we're just not thinking of talking about the next steps that she's gonna be taking. And then that's when she's like, oh, like she's gonna be losing her breast. And I was like, oh, that's what those next steps are. And that's when I was kind of like, oh my god, like I can I understand now what why Lois is kind of you know hesitant and and was not kind of you know is kind of 
just, you know, distancing herself from Clark right now because she's, like, you know, is in a state of, like, worry, wor- being worried and about what that's going to mean and what that's going to do in our marriage and how that, and, 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 and worried about how will this change who she is and will she ever feel beautiful again? She's just worried about all these things and just super, super sad. And even Clark's like to Lana, like, I want to ask if she was okay. Like, I want to talk to her about this, but it's not my place. It isn't happening to me. I don't really know what to say because it's not happening to me. And she's not really ready to talk to me about this. And you know what I mean? You can really tell, like it made Clark really sad when you saw that dress in the donations box, because it's like, he still will see Lois as the same way he saw her, you know, the day she wore that dress. And it wasn't even the fact that it was the dress that he'd say, oh my God, you're the most beautiful person I've ever seen. It's the fact that she every day is the most beautiful person he's ever seen because of her heart. And she doesn't see it from that perspective of that, you know, that's why he said it. He's, and he had to remind her that when he did end up, you know, you know, have, when he did kind of, you know, they were, when she was kind of open, have that conversation with him after her, after Lois talking to Lana about, you know, them kind of, you know, talking about like, Lois is like, you know, when I was younger, you know what I mean? I, I wished for my boobs to go away because, you know, they came in so early. And then Lana's like, you know, my boobs came in like one, my boobs came in late. One came in, um, you know, quicker than the other. I had to stuff my bra and they were kind of, you know, you know, just kind of, you know, talking about it and kind of, you know, trying to make things light, you know what I mean? Light in the room and kind of trying to, she was trying to make Lois feel, like, feel better, feel good about it, about, you know, like, Clark will still love you. You won't, you, you'll still be the same beautiful person that you, that you, you've always been. Everything will be okay. And, you know what I mean? She's just worried about how that's going to affect their, their marriage, their sex life, how that's going to, how that's going to affect if she'll ever feel like, like, you know, comfortable in her body again, where they could ever, you know, have an intimate moment. Like she's just worried about all this where Clark isn't, isn't worried about that. Clark's like, I- I'll always love you. And those scar. And when they have that conversation, it's like those scars will just, will show that you're a survivor, that you beat cancer. You know I mean, I will always look at you the way I've always looked at you. You are beautiful, Lois. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Inside and out. And she's like, Oh, she's like, she even mentions like, Oh, like, cause even says, I, it's like, I was talking about your heart. He's like, Oh, like, she's like, Oh, but you love you. You also love my body. He's like, yes, I love your body as well. Like, I love all of you. You know what I mean? It's not you know, one or the other. Like, you going through this, you know, this, you know, surgery isn't going to change the way I feel about you. And if and if you want to wait for you to feel comfortable in your body before, you know, we have sex again or before, you know, you can feel like we can, you know, have an intimate moment, I will wait. Just know that, like, I will always love you and always look at you the same way I've always looked at you. And that just really made me happy. You know what I mean? It really made me happy. Like, you know what I mean? That like, like that it doesn't like Clark loves her no matter what. It just really made me happy just seeing that and just seeing that, you know what I mean? It was sad at the same time because Lois is like, you know, saw that, you know, it will be okay. You know what I mean? That thing, like she had nothing to worry about. It will be fine. They'll get through it. You know what I mean? It might take some time for her to get used to the change. It might take some time for her to be ready to be open to kind of, you know, have that intimate, have those intimate moments. You know what I mean? And just to know that Clark will still be there and it will always look at her the same way. And yeah, those, those scars will be there, but he's like, those will remind me that you beat cancer. And, and, and those are, those will be the, the sign that, you know, that still let you be here with us you going through the surgery still let you be here and it's still, and still let me be here with the woman I love. And I just, I loved that all that, that really made me feel really happy out of the sadness of how Lois was feeling about everything and how she was worried about she, that she'll never feel beautiful again. Cause she didn't feel beautiful. Now I was just like, it was just, it was sad. It made, really made me feel happy on them having that moment together and them just, you know, being able to talk about it. And it just, it just really made me feel very, very happy. And it just makes me wonder where they're gonna like where are they gonna go with this? Like once once she has that surgery, I, I I'm assuming that means that she will have beat it. So I'm I'm glad that we kind of have that confirmation that things will be okay. Um, and you know what I mean? Yeah, that you know, it might take them a moment to get back to that. You know, them having those that you know them you know her being ready to have you know sex and do all that. But it's stuff that you know it, that they'll figure out. It's not you know what I mean? It he doesn't care about any of that. He cares about the fact of you are still going to be here with me and I'm really happy you're going to be here. You know what I mean? So I I just loved that. I thought it was really, really awesome.
that, you know, they were able to like, have that conversation and, you know what I mean, and just them going through, going day by day that kind of, you know, get through it together. Um, the other thing in this episode, you know, is the kind of the confrontation that really, it was kind of like, I, I mind you guys, I talked about it, you know, last week that I'm kind of, I was kind of in a way torn. I was like, I'm kind of taking John Henry's side about how like, you know, PN needs to be put away in prison. And I'm kind of, I wouldn't, didn't have that much like, oh, I'm kind of feeling in the way for John, you know, John are, are feeling for Bruno seeing, you know, Pia. And I was kind of like, I'm not kind of taking Clark's side on this. You know, she did bad things. She tried killing John. She tried killing you. She needs to be put away in prison. And it's like, I, I love that we get to kind of like, you know, as, as, you know, watchers, we're kind of, you know, we get, you know, that kind of morality put in front of us. Like, what side are we going to take? Like, then they make very good points. Like, they did bad things, but it's the, it, it's the humanity that Clark sees within them that he's like, they did bad things, but, you know, we can't be monsters. We can't do that. We can't take, you know, I, I you know, uh, a man's dying wife away from him. We can't do that. We like, especially we can't hold that over him as leverage to get back the stuff from the DOD. We need to talk to him. So the moment we're like, you know, you know, uh, John tells Clark, he's not allowed to go in there to go talk to Bruno and tell Sam like, yo, like, you know, we talked about this, you know, Clark, it's not your fight. Clark's face is like, you know what I mean? It is, I, I do have, you know, you know, I do have, you know, involvement in this. Like, you can't say, oh, it's like, this doesn't concern me when it does. You know what I mean? You can't say that it isn't my, this isn't my battle, but it is. Um, and, and mainly it's my battle to kind of like convince you to do the right thing, that what you're doing is wrong, keeping someone away from like, you know, his dying wife, you know what I mean? And trying to, and you're holding that over him and keeping his dying wife away from him to get the stuff back from the DOD. You need to like reach out to his humanity and, and try to get him to like, Try to, and try to reason with him and be like, okay, like give us back this stuff. And we, and you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? And, and we'll let you ha see Pia, like just let us have the stuff back and we'll let you see her. And you know I mean, and you can't just act like you're, you, you're using her as a leverage. And, and, and if Clark would have went in earlier in the episode, none of this would have happened. We're like, John, that Bruno would have sent, you know, his goons after John Henry wouldn't have had to have, like, he wouldn't have sent, had to have sent Henry Miller out to kill John. None of this stuff would have even like, what, like what it wouldn't even have happened if like John would like if John Henry would have uh let uh you know or like if John Henry would have let you know Clark go in to go talk to you know or, or to go talk to Bruno and kind of you know reason with him saying like you let me take Pia you know when you were worried that you know when when you saw her collapse on the ground you it didn't matter you know what problems you have with me. Or, or John Henry, you let you trust in me to take Pia to, to get her help. Trust me again to you mean that you will be able to see her if you give us back this stuff. I will I will take you to Pia. Like oh, you will be able to see her. And he actually eventually says, like, yeah, like he was gonna say yeah to the moment later in the episode where like he does go to John, go to Bruno and say, I want to let you see your wife. I'm not a part of John keeping keeping you from your wife i'm not a part of that i saw your humanity about how you the, about the about how you felt when pia dropped on the ground and that you and, and how much you loved her that you were willing to trust me to go get her help trust me and i will let you do that just you need to give back all the stuff from the dod so i can get her get the dod to let you see her and he was going to do that until john henry outright rolled up in there with sam and all the rest of the dod pretty much doing a search of, of the penthouse and pretty much, you know, trying to find the DOD stuff. And mind you, I, mean, I understand why John Henry retaliated like that because Bruno sent the goons to Smallville to, to hurt Nat and to hurt him out in broad daylight on, on the Smallville main street. And I thought to myself, are you kidding me? That's the way you get, that's the way you approach you, like you wanting to go, like that's not the right energy you should be throwing at the people that have your wife. You should just give them the shit so that way you could go see your wife. One I thought was dumb either way because it's like, it's not a hard decision. Give back the stuff, you'll be able to see your wife. He wouldn't do it. See what I'm saying? It's, that doesn't make sense also from Bruno Mannheim is because like he went, if he loves his wife so much, he would just give all the stuff back. He wants to be stubborn because John is, is calling the shots. Like he wants to be stubborn. 
until the moment when Superman comes in saying, oh, you, 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 uh, like, I want to, like, approach it from a different perspective, and then that's why he's like, okay, if I give you back the stuff, can I see my wife? He's like, you have my word. And then that's when, of course, you know, when, you know, John and, and Sam came in with the DOD. But mind you, if he wouldn't have sent those dudes, like, you know what I mean? If he would just, you know, outright gave them the stuff, there wouldn't have been a moment where, like, he would have to go send his goons out, you know what I mean, to do that. It would make no sense. Like, he, they have your wife. Why would you think you sending your goons out to go take out John or go take out Nat would help you get your wife back? There was just a lot of things here. I was like, it doesn't make it much sense. If you love your wife, you would give up that stuff so that way you could see your wife. You know what I mean? And there's no difference, but he wanted to be stubborn because John was doing it. But yet when Clark did it, he was getting ready to give up the stuff. See what I'm saying like that? He was being stubborn all because John Henry was the one that was negotiating the terms. And I kind of felt like, you know, in a way you probably felt like John was kind of using, you know, keeping the wife away as leverage. He kind of felt that way, like you're using my life as le- my wife as leverage. So that way I can give you back, you know, you're, I mean, you're using my life as leverage for me to see her. I mean, for me to see her, I have to give back, you know, the DOD stuff. When in Clark wasn't making it sound like he said, you let me, you trust me to do that. Trust me now. Give us back the stuff. and I will let you see your wife. Then he lets him. Then he was like, okay, like I'll give back the stuff where he was about to until they rolled up in there. But it's also in reality, like, you know, John Henry needs to trust that, he, that Clark knows what he's doing on reaching out to people's humanity. That's what's, that's what gets, that's what's going to get them to, you know, at the end of the day, they are human. These villains are humans. Or have humanity in them. You know what I mean? You need to reach into that. That's what makes Clark Superman is able to tap into that humanity to to get them to make the right decision. John Henry hasn't been putting up with that bullshit ever since, you know, he kind of, you know, Bruno almost tried killing his sister on this earth. So in reality, I understood where Bruno is coming from. I mean, I understand where, you know, where uh where John Henry's coming from because Bruno was getting ready to kill John Henry's sister of this earth. So I understand where he's coming from, like, all, like, I'm not thinking from feelings, I'm thinking from that they're bad, they need to be, he, like, she needs to be put away, he needs to give the stuff back, and then he needs to be put away. I understood from that, but at the end of the day, I understand where Clark's, Clark's perspective is, because he has, hum, he has compassion for Bruno, because he, in a way, Clark is going through the same thing Bruno's going through, where, like, his wife has cancer, and Bruno's wife has cancer, and, and Clark is being, is being Clark is, like, looking like trying to put himself in Bruno's shoes saying like if if like I would want the last remaining minutes with Lois I would not want that taken away from me and I don't think it should be taken away from Bruno either so I like that compassion that's what makes Clark Superman like I love that so I really loved that that perspective of this episode like like, they were kind of like at odds but you also thought from like oh John's kind of making a good point no Clark is making a good point I like how they kind of like the show makes you kind of like this storyline right, right now kind of makes you be like, oh, like, I, you know what I mean? And same with Bruno and what he's trying to do to kind of save the wo- the woman he loves and kind of the difference that Clark was willing to do to save the woman he loves, like the things he wa- wasn't willing to do by him letting out the Kryptonian tech to get a cure for Lois. He wasn't willing to go, go to that level because he had rules about doing that. He wasn't willing to go there. But like, it's just, I, I love the different dynamics we get to kind of, you know, to either be with the one that to save the one you love or kind of, you know, or kind of, you know, kind of connect with a villain because the villain's going through the same thing you're going through. So you're connecting with that hum- humanity. I just love the storylines that are going going on in this season. The thing I really didn't care much for was the whole, you know, not wanting to see Mateo. Mateo wanting to see Nat so they can explain to one another. Like Mateo's like, I didn't know my father was doing all this. I heard rumors about it. I didn't know my mom had powers. Nat's like, and then Mateo's like, uh, Nat's like, oh, I didn't know that, uh, or like, I guess like Nat's trying to get answers. Like, oh, did you know? Because, you know, she doesn't want to be with somebody that did know and, and, and wants to be any part of that stuff. And in a way they ended up being okay and fine. But like, you know, Nat didn't know about like, Nat learned from Mateo that he, that, uh, that, uh, Nat's, Nat's father, that John is keeping, you know, you know, keeping his mom, you know, away from, you know, him and Bruno. So like he he know he he knows about like not knows about all that and is not okay with the fact that of where John Henry is going where her father where where her father is like where he is going he's going down a dark path like she doesn't like any of that she didn't know any of that and he's and she he even said like how good could your father be that you're judging my father but yet your father is keeping my mom away from me and and my and, and you know what I mean my mom away from me and my and my dad like you know what I mean like 
your father can't be that much good if he's doing that. She's like, I didn't know that. Of course, they were able to kind of, you know, get on, you know, like, that's when he said, like, I love you. She's like, saying, I, I love you back. And they kind of, like, realize that, you know, they, like, they love each other. So it's like, I didn't really care much for any of that. I was like, oh, okay, like, it is what it is. Like, I don't really care much for that. That was probably the weakest part of the episode. I was like, I, I, don't, I don't really care much about this. Because in, in, in reality, I don't agree with the fact that John, that Jonathan told not to go see Mateo after not almost getting hurt by Bruno's guards. It just didn't make much sense. And mind you, Jonathan, Sarah, and Jordan were there when that happened. But yeah, Jonathan's like, oh, like, you know, uh, you know, Nat, if you really, really care about Mateo and you really want to know, like, and you really want to get answers, you should go see him after Nat almost got hurt. And, 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 and John Henry specifically told Nat to go to Sarah's place and stay there until they, he had things sorted with Bruno after Bruno sending those guys after him and his daughter. So... And it gets to the point where I was kind of like, that doesn't make any sense that John Jonathan would convince Nat to go see Mateo when Mateo might be getting, you know, uh, tailed by Bruno's guards because Bruno's guards are looking after Mateo, but yet Mateo was able to kind of like outmaneuver his guards to go see Nat out in the middle of nowhere. I was like, okay, this, that doesn't really make much sense. There's no way that Mateo was out, was able to outmaneuver, you know, that Bruno Mannheim's guards. I was like, that's bullshit. I don't buy that. But, you know, I really did appreciate the fact that Sarah was trying to get, you know, Jordan and Jonathan, you know, kind of, you know, back to, back to not being cool towards one another anymore and trying to get them to kind of, you know, be brothers again and kind of, you know, get each other to make up again after the whole, you know, shit, the whole kind of, you know, the whole kind of, you know, Jordan kind of getting Jonathan in a way fired and also you know find in and kyle finding out that somebody's saving people around smallville in reality it's not jordan's fault it's jonathan's fault because he left his post when, post when kyle said stay at the fire truck so jo jonathan wanted to just be a big baby in this episode i didn't i didn't i didn't care for any of that either i was like you're being a baby dude like your brother did was saving people you, it's your fault that you didn't stay at your post you could have just stayed at your post and one of the firemen or some or maybe a civilian would have saw the one dude on the ground. You know what I mean? It's like it's your fault, dude. You're but you're making it sound like it's 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 Jordan's fault. In reality, I was glad that kind of you know Jordan did say sorry, but in reality, like Jordan was right about Jonathan. All he was been, all he's been doing is taking coffee orders. He hasn't been doing any fireman junior training at all. He's just been doing coffee orders and and running around for people. Like that's all he's been doing. So Jordan was speaking facts. He just was it was rude though what he said, but he was speaking facts. So I didn't care for him much and. And I didn't care for any of that really either. So in reality, this was just like a sad, but yet good episode of Superman and Lois. Again, there was a couple of things I didn't care for the Nat and Mateo stuff, the, you know, Jonathan being all angry at Jordan shit. I didn't really care much about any of that plot line. We didn't see Kyle. We didn't see Chrissy in this episode. That was a little bit of a bummer, but I guess they really weren't really needed. I did appreciate the fact that we saw Lana and John Henry get very close to each other in this episode, especially like, the moment where like John Henry was like like got attacked or was about to get attacked by you know uh Bruno Man uh, Bruno Mannheim's men, we did have a moment. I think if I'm correct, I can't remember. I think I think it was the moment where like uh, uh Lana came in to see if if uh John was John Henry was okay. Like came in to see if John was okay, and you could totally see that there's they love each other. You could totally see that they're catching feelings for each other. You could see it. And I'm, I'm really like, even at the end of the episode where like John Henry was getting like beaten up because Bruno sent Henry Miller out to kill John Henry. And mind you, John Henry does not have his steel steel suit. It's ruined from last week's episode. It's like destroyed. Um, so, you know, you know, Clark needed to leave the conversation with Lois to go save, you know, to go save uh, John. And, you know, it got to the point where like Clark got like yeeted in the air. He got yeeted in the air. And it got to the point where, like, John Henry, either he had to kill Henry Miller or Henry Miller was going to kill him. And in a way, he even told Clark, saying, you know, you know, because he ended up killing Henry Miller. And and, he, and Clark said, no, don't. But it was already too late. And then that's when, you know, John John said, there was no other. I didn't have a choice. And, and Clark's like, you always have a choice. In reality, I don't know. I mean, that was a make or break situation where, like, bro was getting ready to, like, launch at him. And it's either I kill him or I'm going to be dead. And mind you, there was a lot of buildup of anger I think John Henry had about him being about. I mean, mind you, I understand his frustration. He got dudes sent after him the entire episode 
Bruno sent dudes after him. So you can understand at, at that point, he was like, I'm done with this shit. I'm going to kill this fool. I don't agree with it at the same time, but you can understand that it was either it was a make or break situation where Clark's ass got thrown up in space <laughs> or got thrown up in the air, up in the orbit. And then the, and the only decision really John Henry had was like, I got to kill this fool. I don't have my suit on and this is the only weapon I have. I need to kill him. If I don't do it, I'm going to die. And I have a daughter to look after. So anyway, I understood where his perspective of why he did what he did. But in reality, I understand that there could have been a way to just, you know, incapacitate him and just take him out. You know what I mean? Without killing him. Um, also, everybody's talking about it around Smallville, but Lana did come to like, did come to see Clark and see Sam and say like, is John Henry okay? And they were both looking at each other like, I don't think he is. Like he killed somebody. And on top of that, he's been not seeing the, it's like his humanity is like in a way kind of like off. Where like he just does not feel for Bruno and feel for feel for Bruno the fact that his wife Pia has cancer and feeling for the fact of like about like about that he's not able to see her and is just looking at the fact that they're both criminals and she needs to be put away. You know what I mean? It's kind of like they're worried about his morals. They're worried about his actions, about him killing people. Sam and Clark and everybody are just worried at this point. Nat's worried. Clark's worried. Sam's worried. Juan is worried for for John as well. Jordan's worried. Jonathan's worried. Everybody's worried about John Henry right now. And I'm worried about where this will go. Will he spiral more? Will he realize what he did was wrong? I don't I don't think he did because he said he had no choice. So maybe he thinks what he what he did was right. What he did was what he had to do. It was an interesting conversation, the, the interaction when Nat confronted John Henry and said, like, I know Mateo told me about you keeping, you know, his mother away from him and you kind of using her as kind of a uh, you, you and you using her as leverage to get stuff back from the DOD, like what is that? That doesn't. That's no different from like you know, like or like he's like oh you, she's like oh you're keeping away from him from his dying mother. You know what I mean and like what like what like you should and she I forget what like what she said. She's like oh what if like what if someone gave us the opportunity to have those last couple of minutes like or she's like oh like wouldn't you want those lot like you're keeping him from his dying mother. And you're keeping Bruno away from his dying wife. Like, wouldn't you? Like, what if you could have the last few like minutes with mom? Wouldn't you take that? He's like, that's different. And she's like, no, it isn't. You know what I mean? Or she's like, yeah, it's different. You know what I mean? You, like, they have a choice. We didn't. We don't have. We don't have a choice. We didn't have a choice. But they have a choice, and you're taking that away from them. So I really did appreciate that she was willing to kind of drop the mic on like John Henry and be like, you're doing the wrong thing. They have a choice to to say goodbye and have those re- last remaining days with you know. The, the woman with the person that they love and you're taking that away from them. And it's like, what if someone did that to us with mom back on, on, on back, like with mom, like, like what if we could have those last remaining minutes, but, and we could have them, but someone took them away from us. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not okay. And I'm wondering if John will realize like, Oh damn, I'm, maybe I'm wrong in this situation. It should be very interesting. Um, but yeah, guys, like I said, it was a pretty overall damn good episode. I'm excited for next week's episode. We're actually going to be watching um, the promo for next week's episode. I have it already pulled up right here. Uh, this will be episode 10 of Superman and Lois season three. Uh, guys, we only have four more episodes left of the season, which is really crazy. I think in counting next week's episode, we have four. So we episode we have episode 10, 11, 12, 13. And I think that's it, if I'm correct. Um or I think it's or maybe yeah, yeah I think it's four episodes not five. Let me know if I'm wrong. If correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. Uh, but guys, we're gonna get into the promo for season three, episode ten of Superman and Lois. Let's get into it right about now. The world deserves the truth. The person keeps a secret long enough, the truth is lost. Leave it to them. And you lied to my face. Does it matter? I just saved two people's lives. Teenagers. They want to be with their friends more than their parents. Just be glad they don't hate you. Let's consider it a win. Next week's going to be very interesting, guys. I'm excited to see how that's going to go, especially because it looks like from that promo, I I don't know. Because I, 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 I kind of had like earlier on feelings about this. Like, does Sarah, is Sarah catching feelings for Jonathan? You know, the moment where like Sarah is kind of, you know, doing studying with Jonathan. I feel like in a way, is she catching feelings for him? I don't know. Because a little bit, that's kind of the way it looked when like, Mind you, they could have just been editing it a certain way, but like when Jonathan kissed Candace, it looked like Sarah was kind of like a little bit like kind of like felt weird about that. She kind of looked in a way jealous about that. I couldn't quite tell or not. That'd be very interesting if they go that route. I don't think they will. Hopefully not. I don't want them doing that shit, but we'll have to wait and see. Honestly, 
Um, I'm also wondering, like, will will Jordan and Sarah? I think Jordan and Sarah will get back together. I feel like that we'll start to see that probably before the end of the season. I guarantee it. But it should be interesting though if if like if that's the plot line they're going for, like maybe where Sarah catches feelings for Jonathan, and maybe Jordan knows about that, and Jordan's upset about that. Should be very interesting, honestly, because I I know that the Candace thing isn't going to last for long because I saw like a a, a picture where like John is with another girl and they're looking at some like paper or looking at some book or something. And I think that's going to be like his new love interest. So that should be very interesting to see how this all goes. And I, I don't know, the next week should just be pretty interesting, honestly. Um, but guys, again, here, if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, put those notifications, like this video. I'd love to have you guys here, part of the family, part of the channel. We're all about spreading love, positivity, and motivation. And yet again, guys, we are almost to, uh, you know, 800 subscribers. Uh, guys, yesterday we hit 700 subscribers, which that was the goal to hit 700 subscribers. So I just want to say thank you to everybody that's uh, that's been supporting me here on the channel. It really means a lot to me. Uh, guys, literally, we are a family here on the channel. And the fact that you guys show me love and support each and every day, it just show, it goes to show how much of a family it really here it really is here on the channel. This is just a great community about spreading love, positivity, and motivation. Like, that is my motto. And that is really, like, the, it, that is really the message that I am seeing here with this community is that the message is is really being spread very well about spreading the love and positivity and motivation. It really makes me happy to see that, that my message is getting out there to you guys and, and you guys are just supporting me each and every day. And it just, you guys are really motivating, motivating me to be the best person I can be and really motivating me to kind of, you know, reach for the stars. And that's what I'm still doing. I'm reaching for the stars. Um, one, guys, I'm, I'm telling you, this will, is definitely going to be one of the biggest channels on YouTube. I'm, I'm still, I'm going to put that out in the universe. I'm still putting it out in the universe that this will be one of the biggest channels on YouTube about spreading love, positivity, and motivation. Like, this is definitely going to be it. Um, and you know what I mean? I'm planning on leaving a mark on the world. And guys, the next the next goal is hitting 800 subscribers. That's the goal. My initial goal is hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I really hope to do so. So if you're new here and you love Superman and Lois, definitely yet again, subscribe to the channel, put those notifications, like this video. Guys, I also will be going live on my gaming channel on the Heroverse Gaming for the PlayStation Showcase, that which will be... Uh, you know, uh, the PlayStation Showcase will start at four o'clock, but I will be going live at three thirty p.m. Eastern time. I actually moved it up. I was gonna do it at three three forty, but I'm actually just gonna do it at three thirty. Um, so expect me to be going live over there. Hopefully, we're gonna be seeing some Spider Man Two PS Five content. I really do hope so. Fingers crossed, we see something, whether it be gameplay or I hope. I'm hoping it's a gameplay. I'm really hoping we get the pre order drop today as well for the game. Because if we do get the pre-order drop, I'm going to head out to GameStop and go buy that game. Or go pre-order it right away. So definitely, if you guys want to see my reaction to the PlayStation Showcase, like I said, I will be live at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time over on the gaming channel at Heroverse Gaming. Definitely do so and go subscribe over there and go put on those notifications. Um, because it really means a lot to me. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers over on the gaming channel. So definitely, if you support me here... Definitely, I would love it if you guys could support me over on the gaming channel. And also, guys, this is a new webcam I have here for my channel. I made a lot of upgrades to the channel. One of them is my Logitech 4K webcam. I think it looks amazing. I think it definitely think it, it looks. It definitely has made a difference in the quality of the videos, and I really hope it shows. Definitely, let me know, guys, how you what you guys think about the webcam. Um, but yet again, guys, that was the video. I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.